That's right. That's what he said. <laughs> I will call the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Mr. Jamison, roll call vote, please. Schwartz? Here. Leyland? Here. Little? Here. White? Here. Trelka? Here. We will now have a moment of silence to reflect on our actions. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll entertain a motion to receive the agenda as proposed or amended. So moved. Second. So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. We have an agenda. Public comments. Do we have anybody in the boardroom who would like to provide public comment? Do we have anybody online or on Zoom that would like to provide public comment? Claims and payments. Mr. Perry. This week's expenditures total $1,297,579.45. Uh, the larger expenditure is secondary road 16237 uh, we are in insurance renewal um, uh, claim in there conservation seventeen thousand eight thirteen maintenance fifty seven thousand four eighty seven we had it at twenty two thousand two sixty nine and finally the sheriff's department one eighty five one seventy six everything looked normal okay this is a resolution that the board of supervisors approve expenditures and that the county auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks against the various settlements of such claims as allowed. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Jamison, roll call vote, please. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Project updates from department heads and elected officials. Kathy? Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. Uh, construction is going well on uh, the roadway projects and the bridge projects. I did want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about a bus tour. Uh, we've been emailing and talking about that for a few weeks now, and I wanted to um, firm up a date. And I was have talked with Met Transit, the director there, and he uh, suggested that he could um, loan us a bus with a driver for two or three hours. I suggested a time after a board meeting, a Tuesday morning, for example, from 10 a.m. until noon or 10 a.m. until 1, 1 p.m. or however long it takes. Uh, either next Tuesday or the last Tuesday of the month, July 27th, would, are those dates acceptable or sure. one of those dates? Does anybody have a preference? They're both good for they're, me. They're both fine for me. Craig? I don't know. I've got, I've got new doctor's appointment, so it depends on him. Tom, Linda, any preference on yeah. dates? Yeah, I'm in communication with Kathy. I sent her an email gotcha. back yesterday, so we're on a wait and see. Okay. So I told her to go ahead and schedule what's the best date for everybody. Both work. What's that, Linda? Both work for me. Okay. Okay. Kathy? Yes. Uh, the last time, and I can't remember the reason why, and I think it was, we had to go on the uh, uh, the highway uh, with the Met Transit, which normally doesn't go. We had a um, sheriff's car with us. Um, I don't recall the reason for that. You might want to check with the sheriff. Uh, I remember they picked us up when we, we left uh, the North Cedar area and was on that off ramp. They picked us up. I don't know if it's because bus moves too slow or what it was I will um, speak with director Sturge and Sheriff Thompson and we'll get that worked out okay. uh, let, let me propose then that the first choice would be July 27th the last Tuesday of the sure. month that'll be the day before Ragbri comes to the area um, I'll talk with um, director Sturge and then I've, I've uh, had several places suggested I would like to stop take you to the Cedar River Bridge replacement uh, the Gresham Road bridge replacement, and then the Grundy Road gra grading project, a small bridge crew project that was done in the last year, um, one of our paving projects from the last couple years, so you can see some of the safety improvements we've been working on. And then uh, also probably either the Bennington 
Truss Bridge or the Wheeler Road Bridge. Those are the two bridges that are closed in the northeast portion of the county. Um, not sure if we can get the bus up to the Bennington Truss area, but we'll we'll certainly check that out before we. So I'll prepare a list so you have a map and know where we're going and some information about the the projects, and then we'll get that same information to the, the Met Transit. All right, sounds good. Okay, I'll thank be you. In touch, thank you. Any others? Rory? Good morning, board. Rory Giving, maintenance superintendent. Um, just wanted to share with you, uh, we were able to uh, turn the uh, solar system on over at the Pinecrest facility last Tuesday. Um, so that system is up and running. All seven systems are up and running. Um, we are still working on the uh, communications as far as being able to pull that system up online to see what it's producing. Um, that is tied in, it's just I cannot see that yet. So once I have that, um, I will uh, present all seven of those to the board. Um, and then I'll be working with uh, Kim to, uh, and Eagle Point to uh, incorporate that onto our uh, website. Uh, so the uh, public can also see that as well. Uh, the second item I wanted to bring to your attention is our temporary parking pass uh, procedure here at the uh, courthouse. Um, we implemented a, uh, a new procedure uh, to where we are asking anybody who is assigned a temporary pass, uh, they will have to bring that back to us uh, monthly. Um, so every month uh, they'll have to come back down. If they still meet the five pieces of criteria that's listed out in the ordinance, um, that pass can be reissued to them for another month. So essentially what we're doing away with is the uh, long-term uh, temporary passes. Um, we've also added a color code uh, to each month so it's easy visible uh, out in the uh, parking lot. So uh, each month will have a uh, color assigned to it. So uh, we hope that that will uh, simplify the process and uh, allow us to better manage it. So any questions? Rory does, that, Rory, does that change anything in the ordinance, any language that you mentioned? It does not. Um, we still are going to be following the uh, criteria that's listed. It's just uh, more of an internal uh, managing of the process. So it's exciting that the solar is all online. It's a, Very. It's a really great investment for this community. It's going to pay dividends for the environment and financially. For, for years to come. Very much so. I uh, look forward to bring some more information to you as uh, as we're able to uh, tap into that system and see the production. So, Very cool. Thanks, Rory. Thank you. Any others? Okay, let's move on to uh, approval of the minutes for July 6, 2021. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mr. Jamison, roll call vote, please. Little? Yes. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Item 7A is a resolution that the lowest reasonable bid received from Limbo for computerized maintenance management system with a bid of $6,720 be approved and for the chair to sign the contract, conditional to the receipt of certificate of insurance as recommended by Rory Geving, maintenance superintendent. It looks like we had three bids, Dude Solutions, $9,796, Limbo, $6,720, and Upkeep, $7,200. Uh, correct, uh, again, Rory Giving, maintenance superintendent. Um, just to give you a little back history uh, with the building maintenance, um, uh, several years ago we did start using a work order system through our New World uh, financial management system. Uh, we gave it, I would say, our, our best uh, attention and, and uh, we tried uh, our hardest to make the system work. It just did not meet our needs, um, particularly in the uh, preventative maintenance uh, realm. Uh, we were able to issue work orders. Uh, the reporting was uh, somewhat difficult, um, and it definitely was not a lack of trying uh, from both the IT department and our department. Um, 
So we made the decision uh, at budget time last year uh, to scrap that um, and ask for a new work order system. So with uh, much review of, of systems that are out there, um, we found that this one uh, will fit our needs. Um, it, uh, it, it is a, uh, a mobile system, meaning that uh, our staff uh, literally can be out on the job site, uh, wherever they're at, uh, they'll receive our work orders. Um, they'll be able to input work orders. Um, all employees will have a, a link that they can go to to initiate a work order. Uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, show reporting on that uh, in many different aspects. Um, we feel it's a great management tool for us. Um, when you have multiple facilities, uh, sometimes you can get pretty buried. Uh, it's going to allow us to uh, really uh, improve on the management of our staff, and I believe our staff is going to end up uh, liking it as well. So just to give you a couple examples, uh, if you're working on a piece of equipment, um, you're going to be able to pull that equipment up on this system and see anything and everything that's ever been done to that piece of equipment. You'll be able to pull up vendors that might be associated with it, uh, parts that might be associated with it. It's going to help expedite um, uh, the completion of those work orders and it's going to really put uh, a valuable tool in our uh, in our staff's hands along with uh, management um, it does have a great preventative maintenance aspect to it um, it uh, spare parts inventory which uh, you know we look at critical spare parts in our department uh, things that have a, a great deal of lead time uh, so we'll be able to better manage that as well. Um, just vendor management, uh, when we go out for proposals, uh, we can build this system to include all the vendors that might be associated. Uh, so it really will uh, be a great asset to our department and allow us to better manage our, our staff and the priorities of these work orders um, based on uh, specifics that we put out there as priorities. Uh, the other nice thing, um, the uh, the employees that are initiating these work orders uh, can see the status uh, as they as it goes they can pull up that work order and see where it's at uh, if they're waiting on a piece of equipment or a part um, that person that uh, assigned that work order will be able to look that up at any time um, each of our staff uh, will have a uh, be able to ac access this on their cell phone and on their desktop so great mobility um, this particular company, uh, we did a lot of research on them. Uh, they have a, a pretty impressive uh, reference uh, uh, list of companies that they do provide services for. Um, they, uh, let me just go through my list here. Um, the other thing that uh, you know we we've talked about for several years, and that's succession planning, um, with regards to whoever the departments are. Uh, succession is is a is a real thing, and it's an important uh, thing as a department head uh, that they be looking at that as uh, something uh, that should be a critical piece in their role. Um, God forbid something were to happen. Uh, you know that I wasn't able to come to work I really feel that building this system would allow somebody to really jump in that seat and and get a good uh, history on what our department's about and what we've done um, so I do think uh, following our 2028 vision um, uh, this will be a great asset to our department with regards to that as well move to approve is that a month or a yearly that is a yearly yeah. subscription yes Rory, how much did you uh, budget for that? I budgeted uh, $5,000, and uh, to give you a little background on that, too, if you recall, um, IT also budgeted uh, the same amount. So our goal going into this was to find a system that we could share, uh, okay. thinking that that would be more efficient. Um, what we learned is there's really there are two different worlds. When you're looking at IT and facility management, um, there really isn't a system out there that captures the needs that the IT department would really need with regards to 
uh, what they do with regards to uh, uh, computers and things like that. Um, so if we wanted to use it just for a basic work order system, I think it would work okay for both departments, but I think IT's vision goes a little deeper than that. Um, and so we chose to uh, branch off onto our own and really focus just on the facility management's part of it. Is there okay, and then the other, the other question I had, Rory, is you indicated uh, it'll be on your employees' phones. Are the employee phones all county phones? Yes, they are. And um, is there a security in place? Because I'm assuming um, you're going to have information on there of machinery or equipment in the jail. And um, as far as anybody getting access to that? Um, we, we talked a little about firewalls. They do have firewalls in place. Um, that's something, too, that I'll have to work with IT just to make sure that we have all the proper uh, safeguards in there. Um, it is a web-based system, um, so that is something that we will definitely need to work with IT on to make sure that their firewalls and IT firewalls are uh, satisfied. Okay. Have you talked to the sheriff at all about that on having equipment in that jail that could be online that somebody could potentially hack and disable? Um, so the equipment, uh, the physical equipment, um, it's more so uh, uh, management of that equipment. So like for an example, if you look at our boiler system over there, um, yeah. what, what this system would provide to us is any vendor that's associated with, uh, with us as far as working on that system, any spare parts that we might consider critical, uh, that we need to have on the shelf in order to keep that system up and going. Um, so they, they wouldn't necessarily be able to, to tap into that particular piece of equipment, but they could, you know, if somebody were to breach it, they could, they could see our, uh, our spare parts list, uh, the work that's been completed on that piece of equipment, um, things like that. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, it was just a thought. I, yeah. You know, security nowadays are big, especially if you're dealing with the jail, a sheriff would know more about that. Absolutely. Rory, what about uh, putting the vehicles on there? We, everything. Um, even uh, another thing I didn't mention, uh, energy usage. Uh, we can, uh, uh, which we already do on our own spreadsheets, but this will allow us to input our uh, energy usage for all of our facilities. So at the end of the year, we can uh, deliver a nice report. And, and what's neat about that is uh, when we do these projects, these energy efficiency projects, uh, you would assume that uh, your usage would go down, um, which we do see. Now, unfortunately, we don't see costs necessarily go down because the rates continue to go up. Um, but what we're focused on is usage. Um, so our rates don't necessarily go up along with that. We kind of stay flatlined as long as we continue to do energy efficiency mm -hmm. projects. But uh, yeah, there. Uh, this essentially will be our uh, our bible and maintenance when it comes to uh, inputting information, um, energy, uh, everything. Does the contract address, or will there be a policy that if a phone is lost, it'll be immediately disabled? Uh, in our in our policies currently, there is a uh, there's some verbiage in there that uh, the county has. Uh, has sole right to that phone. If there's if there's a concern, they can shut down that system. Yeah, and, and I believe that's the, the case, right? Yeah. I will second the resolution. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. Mr. Jameson, roll call vote, please. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Leyland? Leyland? You're muted, Linda. Little? Yes. Trelka? Yes. How about now, Tim? Oh, sorry, Linda. How was your vote? Yes. All right. Item 8A is a motion that the personnel requisition for two office specialists full-time replacement with a start date no sooner than July 13, 2021, in Don't the move. treasurer's office be approved as recommended by Rita Schmidt, county treasurer. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. 
Item 8B is a motion that the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors authorize and direct the county auditor to cancel outstanding checks through so June 30th, 2019. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Item 8C is a resolution to establish Fund 165, American Rescue Plan Fund, in an effort to help account for expenses and revenues related to the bill passed on March 11th, 2021, as recommended by James Perry, Finance Director. So moved. Second. Mr. Perry? Uh, this is really just establishing a new fund just to better account for those transactions. So it's, it's going to be a little bit easier on our end. Um, accounting for those and then it's not going to be within the general fund so i thought establishing this new fund would just make it a little bit easier streamline the process keep it cleaner too right you're exactly right all right it's been moved and seconded mr jameson roll call vote schwartz yes leyland yes little yes white yes Trelka? yes Item 8D is a resolution to establish a separate fiduciary fund for consolidated communications, Fund 764, Consolidated Communications, effective July 1st, 2021, in an effort to more accurately account for the Consolidated Communications Agency's fiscal transactions, as recommended by James Perry, Finance Director. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? The only thing I'll say on this is uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board issued uh, GASB 84, which really just uh, gave a little bit more clear guidelines on what fiduciary activities really are. Uh, those are going to be uh, benefiting a different, a, a separate party. And so when looking at this, it just makes a little bit more sense to pull them out of the general fund uh, and put them in their own separate fund, something extremely similar to the assessor's office. Um, and, and to, to better uh, accurately ac account for their transactions. Uh, effective July 1, only because when we, when we establish this fund and create the corresponding line items with everything, they are gonna be using the general fund up until a certain point. We're gonna kind of flip that switch, so to speak, uh, and then come, come December, we're gonna do a budget amendment. So uh, I just wanted to put July 1 on, on, uh, in the resolution, just when we start doing journal entries, uh, to account for those transactions uh, we have to retroactively do it to july 1 so okay does it does it affect anything james anything different no the only thing that is going to change is instead of using 001008 which is the general fund uh consolidated communications agency they're going to they're going to start using 764008 so everything stays the exact same they're just they're just going to use a different fund all right. Any other comments or questions? It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Jamison, roll call vote, please. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Item 8E, discussion in regard to county preparedness and possible updates for COVID-19. Josh, you're on. What do you have for us? Good morning, board. Uh, Dr. Bunny just asked me to uh, provide a brief update on where we're currently at with our COVID-19 numbers and our vaccination efforts. Josh, we're getting a little uh, feedback. A little feedback? A lot. Okay. How is that? Is that better? Nope. All right, just one moment. How is that board? It still seems to be there, but let's give it a shot. Hey, apologies for that. Uh, uh, as I was saying, Dr. Bunny asked me to give a brief update on where we're at with um, our COVID-19 numbers and our vaccination up, uh, vaccination efforts. Uh, as far as the numbers go, um, as of uh, yesterday morning, we were at 16,498 positive cases, um, 15,749 recoveries, a percent positivity over the last 14 days of 8.9% and 316 deaths. Uh, we are making some changes to our report, our daily reporting. Uh, we'll uh, now be changing the recoveries and death numbers to uh, weekly reporting to align with um, changes that the state made effective last week. 
Um, so they are no longer doing daily updates. Uh, so we don't have uh, new numbers to post daily. So we'll be posting those uh, recovery and death numbers weekly instead. As far as our vaccines go, um, as of uh, as of this week, 60.4% um, uh, of uh, Black Rock County residents 18 and over have received at least one dose of vaccine, and 57.4% of uh, that same group is fully vaccinated. So we're making progress with our uh, vaccinations. Um, we did not uh, quite hit uh, President Biden's goal of 70% uh, by the 4th of July, but we did hit 60%. So um, we are continuing to make progress and um, continuing our efforts. Uh, one thing that we will be doing um, uh, next week is we'll be holding a uh, a vaccination event with uh, targeting um, youth for back to school. So the uh, the 12 to 17 year olds for back to school will be the, the target audience for that uh, that clinic, and we'll be holding that at the uh, the Sportsplex. And the Sportsplex has been a great uh, partner for us uh, in uh, finding that uh, that effort. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Josh? Does anybody have any further updates? Um, I just want to uh, give my um, praise to the county conservation staff. I spent two weeks uh, or two nights last week um, camping at uh, Hickory Hills, one of the cabins with uh, my four nephews. Uh, second year in a row, we've done one of them and they have a great time every time. And it's just a, a testament to the remarkable work that our conservation staff does. All right. Uh, I have two items. Uh in regard to information and reports from the board, uh, evals. We had talked about evaluations for department heads. I've talked with Amanda a little bit, and uh, one page out of our entire evaluation process is very appealing, and it talks about goals, short-term and long-term, and I'll uh, forward that to all the board members, and I'll have it on the agenda for next week for discussion. It's short, sweet, and simple. Uh, I find that, personally, I find that appealing. Uh, the Board of Health, we've only had one applicant, but uh, they want to fill their vacant position, so we should schedule interviews. Who, want, who from the Board wants to be involved in the interviewing process? Do we have candidates? We have one. We have one candidate. I had several, I've had two other individuals contact me interested, but neither applied. And, I'd uh, like the, go ahead, Tom. I'd like I'd like the board maybe even consider putting a uh, supervisor on the health board. Mike, uh, that's intriguing. Is that, apparently that's allowed. That is allowed. Yes, there's a, a section under 331 that expressly permits that. Um, it's also been, uh, if you look at an article, um, it's called 10 Rules of Thumb for Local Boards of Health, I believe, uh, by uh, David Vestal. Uh, he, it, it's an interesting concept, but it, it definitely is permitted. Uh, yes. How's it decided? The other board members decide. No, and that's just it. The uh, the other the board member who is applying, or the board members who were applying, would have to recuse themselves. You couldn't have any more than two apply because you'd have to have a quorum of the board of supervisors in order to make that decision. But but I cannot see how you would involve one who was applying uh, her or himself uh, in that decision-making process or in that voting process. And I assume it would, t it would take uh, a majority of a vote from the board to proceed with something such as this to even, uh, uh, what I'm getting at is should we put it on the agenda for next week? Um, I don't know if you'd have to. I think what would have to happen is somebody, if there's a board member from this board that wishes to apply to be on uh, one of the other boards, and this isn't just Board of Health, uh, that individual would submit an application just like any other candidate for that, uh, that board position. And whatever interview process is engaged in would then apply to that individual as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. But, but that individual would recuse himself or herself uh, from uh, that process, from those discussions, and from that vote. Is there anybody on the Board of Supervisors interested? I'm curious. Or do we need a week to think about it? I mean, well, why don't you, I just threw it out there, uh, Dan, so why don't we just wait a week or so and see if anybody wants to think about it and so forth. Uh, it's, 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 not uncommon there's uh, counties i know one county above us uh as a supervisor that serves on the va commission um 
years ago, uh, Blackout County was looking at that process for our VA commission. So I think there are counties that have supervisors that serve. Uh, if you look at the code, it could be a commission, it can be a board, committee, uh, supervisors have the authority to serve on any of those. I would assume the process would be the same when it, the uh, name would go up in front of the board of supervisors, uh, the individual would abstain and the rest of the board would vote. Be just like a normal process. Interesting. And I would like Mike, I guess, to do a little bit of research on that only from this standpoint, Tom, um, that I wouldn't want any conflict of interest and then vote from a board of health position or any other board uh, to conflict with making it more difficult for the board of supervisors. Yeah, there is a spring court ruling on it already, Linda. It, it's again, it's it, you can do it as a supervisor. The code spells it out. Well, let's put oh, no, I, I've seen that. You're correct. You, you can do it. I just meant to not make it more difficult for us in our decision making. That's yeah, all. Yeah, obviously. I guess. And I'm not saying any board member wants to do it. It's just a thought. And uh, I think the board should think about it. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I guess, uh, you know, we're, we already they have a liaison to the board and two people can and even two supervisors can attend those meetings. I like to spread the the civic engagement around the community as much as we can and give people an opportunity to get involved and so we have you know one really qualified applicant right now so i just worry about even though i don't question that we can legally do this but i, I do just see conflict of interest coming up on a fairly regular basis with this kind of setup so i i would not want to be interested i wouldn't be supportive of of that and it's not you know, out of any offense to any of my fellow supervisors I, I must Dan, say, I'm yeah, Dan, I'm not, yes, yes, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just disappointed in the lack of participation from community. our community on all mm -hmm. the boards. I wish uh, we, yep. could, we could get more citizens involved. I agree. Any other discussion? Let's uh, put this item on the agenda for discussion for next week. Uh, Mike, can you do a little research? You bet. I'll, I'll do that. I'll probably be in touch with at least Supervisor Leyland just to make sure I understand what the specific concern is. But yes, I can do that. Because this applies to many boards, interestingly. All right, any other points of discussion or information from the board? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those